Hey guys, welcome back to I am Gizmo Geek. In this video, I'll be sharing some useful and simple tricks for the Blockpunk Key Lago 970. Some of these I have already mentioned in my previous videos, but thought of making a collective video of them. So let's get started. The first one is changing the wallpaper of the system. The default one is generally black, but you can change to some preset wallpapers or download of your choice. Just long press on the empty area on the home screen and you get the wallpaper option. Tap on it and select wallpaper for choosing from default ones. If you have downloaded any, you can select my photos. Select the wallpaper you like and click on set wallpaper on the top and you are done. Let me show you again by setting one more wallpaper. Next one is the Bluetooth audio. This is a common mistake that we can do. When the phone is connected to device via Bluetooth, we assume that the sound from the phone should come on the stereo. But do keep in mind that only when we open the Bluetooth music app, the sound will come out of the stereo. If not, the phone won't even play the music and keeps pausing it. So whenever you turn on the stereo, make sure to turn on the Bluetooth music app if you want the music or the sound from the phone to come out of the stereo. Next one is the backlight for these touch buttons on the panel. By default, these are kept on in most of the devices. But generally, these are not necessary to be kept on in daylight, as they are easily visible and actually I find some light bleeding when you see from the driver's angle. So I like to keep them off. All you need to do is go to Settings, General and select Factory Settings. 1234 will be the password. In the factory menu, scroll down to key lamp settings and turn off key illumination. Now the backlight will turn on automatically only when you turn on the headlamp, which would be obviously in the night time. Remaining time they stay turned off. Next is the split screen app usage. Many of you have been asking about this feature, whether it supports or not. I will show you how to use it. It's pretty simple. First of all, open the apps you want to use in split screen. Let's say I want to use Google Maps and Spotify side by side. I open both the apps and then slide down from the top to select multitasking to open the Recents menu. Tap and hold the app you want to and drag to one side. It automatically adjusts to half the screen. Now for the second app, just tap on it and you're good to go. You can even drag the slider to change the screen occupied by each app. To come out of it, you can drag over the app you want to close. Now do note that not all apps support this. Let me show you that. I'll keep the Play Store on one side. Now when I check the apps available in the background, some of the apps show a notification that they don't support the split screen. So you have to use them accordingly. Next up is to change the home screen. We all know that the interface is very clumsy and not so good looking with these huge icons and no animations at all. Luckily as the device is an Android one, we can easily change the look of it by installing any home launcher. Search for car launcher on Play Store as this will come up with suggestions that are slightly designed for car head units. But you can also install phone launchers like Nova to customize on your own. I like this car launcher free and let me show you why by installing it. 
Once installed, open it and allow the permissions. This is the new home screen of the home launcher and this is the app drawer. You can add some favorite apps here to quickly access them. When you press home next time, make sure to select car launcher or the launcher you installed and click on always. With the car launcher, when you play music, it even shows the album art on the left. Overall, this provides a very nice way to customize the device. Next is accessing Android settings. The plop and key logo actually hides away the general Android settings we are used to. Even uninstalling apps is not easy, one has to go to play store and uninstall them. But once you install any home launcher you can easily access them. Tap on the settings option on the top and select system settings. And voila. You can control app permissions, uninstall apps, clear data of the apps, display settings, check storage, And you can even check the Android version and security patch. Next up is the storing FM channel info in the radio. Let's say I want to save the 102.8 channel. I change the FM value to the value I want and long press in the quick tab buttons at the bottom for storing the channel in that location. This feature is useful for storing FM channels in the order we want to. The auto scan of the radio actually stores the channel in a very random fashion and I would want to store them in an increasing order. So with this method I have stored all the FM channels in this manner. Next is turning off the screen. There are actually two ways of doing it. First, if you don't want to be distracted by the screen or its brightness but want to listen to the music, just swipe down and tap screen off. This will turn off the screen but the music will keep on playing. Second is using the power button on the touch panel. This will put the device to mute and also turn off the screen. So you can use whichever one that suits your requirement. Next is the steering wheel control. Mostly these settings will be preset by the person who will be installing it. But if you want to change and customize yourself, you can do that too. Go to settings and SWC and tap on steering wheel control. There are a lot of quick shortcuts that you can map for any key you want to. Just tap on start and then select the action you want to use and then long press the key you want it to work with. Now keep in mind that whenever you are going into the learning mode, you have to redo all the key learning in this way, even if you want to change only one key shortcut. So let me quickly map all the keys again. Now the last one is music playback. If you are someone who doesn't play music from USB or phone but want to directly play from the device itself through internet, you can use any Android music app like Amazon Music, Spotify or YouTube etc. But out of many apps I have used, I suggest to use the Spotify Lite as this app takes the least time to load and quickly plays the music. While other apps take at least 30 to 40 seconds to load, this app does that in almost 10 seconds and the music playback quality is also good. This app also supports steering wheel control. So those are the tricks that I have come up with and I hope the tricks are useful for you guys. Do let me know your favorite one. See you guys in the next video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on social media. Let me know in the comments if you have any doubts. Bye and take care.